All right, so we're airborne in the Harrier, and I'm going to walk you through how to utilize the navigation system on this aircraft in the fastest and easiest way possible. Now, full disclaimer, if you want to learn the navigation system in detail and everything they can do, this isn't the video for you. There are other creators that have covered it in detail. Recommend you go search those videos out. But for those of you that want to have a baseline understanding of how to manipulate it, uh, how to do the core elements of what you're going to be doing in the majority of your flights, then stick around. We're going to jump straight into it. Now, this is what it's going to look like when you fire up the aircraft. Uh, you're going to have the display show the map behind all the symbology. And personally, I think it's just a cluttered mess, it, at least for me. Now, this is a preference thing here. But I would honestly advise anybody new to the aircraft that hasn't kind of developed that eye, go ahead and turn this off. And so the first thing I'm going to teach you to do is to take off that map. So on the left side here, uh, third push button down, it says map M. We're going to push that in. Then we'll come over to the right side, the second push button down, where it has map box. We're going to unbox that. Oh, it went away on me. And now look how much cleaner and, and how much more that pops out that allows me to see all my symbology at a quick glance without you know, really straining myself to make out things, right? You kind of get rid of that background uh, as a distraction. Now, again, it's a preference thing, but I think it's worth showing. The other thing I should have prefaced this and said here is we've got to make sure that we're in the proper master mode. Uh, quickly, if we take a look at our adjustment controls, you're going to want to have your uh, master modes. I think you should have them bound, your master mode air to ground, your master mode V-stall, and finally your master mode nav. Have those bound so you can quickly switch through those master modes because in this aircraft you you will switch through them quite a bit from taking off and landing to then navigating to then doing your ordinance you're going to switch them around so might as well go ahead and bind those so we're in nav mode all right next what we're going to do is take a look here at our waypoints one of the most important buttons that you're going to need in my opinion is going to be the waypoint increment button if we come back to our controls i'm gonna press it in here and you'll see that it's called the waypoint increment wp increment that is a very important button that uh, might get overlooked here. If you don't have a spot to bind this on your HOTAS, then the keyboard command is right window uh, and W. Now that we have that bound, let me show you what it can do. We take a look here. You'll see that we are on waypoint zero. Waypoint zero was the base that we took off from. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit that waypoint increment button, WP increment, and I'm cycling through. Hit it again, I'm cycling through. Hit it again, cycling through. The waypoint increment allows you to cycle through your waypoints very, very quickly. So as I'm doing other things, I'm in flight, I can glance over and just keep on hitting the switch through my waypoints very quickly, very quickly, very quickly to get to the one that I want uh, and go from there. The other thing I want to point out here is when we go through our waypoint increments here, you'll see that on the, uh, on the display uh, right here on the bottom, there's a little triangle with a circle there that denotes the waypoint direction. If I hit the waypoint increment button again, it'll, it'll switch and it switches there. That's telling me the direction for waypoint one. If I hit it again, you'll see that waypoint two shifted over and, and that's the heading. And then waypoint three comes back right below me, kind of my, my uh, uh, directly behind me. And so look for that symbology on the navigation display and that's gonna point you to the direction that you need to turn and the heading you need to go to to uh, go towards that uh, waypoint. So what I'll do here is I'll circle back to waypoint zero and I'll just go ahead and, and turn around here. We're going to get Bitch and Betty, I think. There we go. So we're just going to go ahead and turn ourselves in that direction here. And you'll start to see it's rotating around. So as we're turning, we'll just keep an eye on the nav and we'll turn just about there. And what's going to happen here is bam. There it is on our HUD symbology. That circle denotes our, let me put us back in an auto flight control here. Perfect. That little circle denotes our waypoint. So if I were to hit the waypoint increment again, it'll switch off and now it's off our HUD because now we switched over to waypoint one. I'll go back to two, three, three's out in front of us or either or further. And then when we hit waypoint again, it cycles back to the very start of our waypoint, which is zero, which is the air base that we took off from, which is right there. The other thing you can take a look at here is our HUD symbology. It's going to show us our waypoint distance. Right now, we're about 20 miles uh, out from waypoint zero. And so if we switch that out to waypoint one. 
you'll see that it now displays 54 miles and also that W1 for Waypoint 1. So you get that information on your Waypoint and your nav, uh, also on that HUD. So you don't always have to look down over here. If you're just paying attention to your HUD, you're switching through your waypoints, switching again, waypoint three. Okay, that's the one I want to go to. I'm 85 miles out. And so it's going to display on the HUD. Next, what I want to show you is how to designate your waypoints. This can also be used for your target points, but since we're talking about navigating right now, I might save that for the weapons teapot video. But let me just show you anyway. What's cool about the designate here is for example, I have my DMT up right now. When we hit that designate, it's going to then slew whatever uh, systems that we have on board, whether it's a teapot, if we don't have the teapot on like we don't now, uh, then our DMT is up. It'll slew the teapot or the DMT over to that waypoint and or target point. So I'll hit designate and you'll see that the symbology changed from the circle. Oops, we'll get back on there from that circle, when we hit designate, you'll see it turns into a square and that denotes that we've designated that. At the same time, you'll now see our DMT is looking right down over there. And you'll see it's looking at the runway right there where we took off from. So that designates is really important there to get you in the right direction, have your sensors looking over in that direction, uh, spe specifically for your, your targeting, especially when you're looking for targets. So if we salute over to waypoint one, and now let's say we're looking for targets, now that it's saluted into the general area, you know, I can move around my stuff and oh, look what's this? I found something right here, right? That's really the, the great thing about that designate button on the nav system. Uh, it is really, really helpful for sure. And when we get into the targeting pod stuff and the weapon systems, I'll cover this uh, a bit more, uh, how to utilize that. Another function I want to get back to when it comes to navigating your waypoints, we talked about the waypoint increment button. It's It has a multi-use function as well. So when we tap it, it cycles through our waypoints. But if we press and hold it, it gives us our waypoint menu and that displays right there. Now at this point, we can switch between our waypoints and target points, as you'll see right here. Um, now I'm only able to do this because I locked in a target point for the demonstration. And I want, again, I want to cover this more when we get into the weapons system stuff. But what I do want to say is this, if we're on our target point and I kind of ran into this issue early on, you're locking in targets of opportunity, you drop on something, you, you lock in a target point. What ends up happening is you'll end up cycling through. If I were to hit waypoint increment, um, they only have one on here, but let's say there was a couple more target points, like three more. If I hit the waypoint increment, it would cycle through those target points. And when I get to the last target point, you might think, okay, well, it's going to roll over into my waypoints and that would be incorrect. Whatever kind of uh, uh, waypoint or target point that it is on, it's only going to cycle through on that and it won't switch over to the other one. So let's say I finish all my bombing runs. I took out the four targets, tar target point one, two, three, and four. And now I want to get a heading and a waypoint uh, back to base. If I keep hitting the waypoint increment, I'm never, I'll never get that waypoint. And if you think you're stuck, the solution to it is very simple. You press and hold that waypoint increment button. You get your waypoint menu pop back up. You'll click over to waypoint and you'll type in whatever waypoint it is. So let's say for example, it's waypoint three. So I'll put three, enter and look at that. Now we switch back into wait waypoint uh, selection here. And if I were to hit the waypoint increment, it's, it cycles through all my waypoints. So if you find yourself stuck with the target points and you can't get back to your waypoints, that is how to switch back. And then allows you to go through your waypoints to get to the ones that you want to. Very, very simple and easy to do. All right, next thing I want to show you is how to change the scale on your nav display here. Right now, I believe it normally sets up at a 25 mile radius, but if you hit the SEL button here, you can also get a little bit tighter at 13, five mile if you're doing something really close to you, and then it bumps all the way out to 100, and you'll end up seeing stuff a lot further out. Um, so if you do want to cycle through that, you're going to end up, you know, this is how to do that. And I typically end up just leaving it at 25 uh, for myself and kind of leave it at that. But you have different options for sure, depending on what you want to do.
All right, next we're going to talk about mark points, and they're so useful and I think really underutilized because they allow you to quickly enter in something that caught your eye that is of interest uh, very, very quickly. Uh, whereas waypoints you're typically entering in in advance, obviously you have to enter in the north and the, the latitude, longitude information, all that stuff, which would be cumbersome. The mark points is a quick way to just store something in your nav system so that you can come back to uh, whether you're going to go bomb something there or you want to just check it out in more detail. And so in order to do this, um, what we're going to end up doing is, for example, I'm going to demonstrate this here. I'll take us out of auto flight controls. Coffee. Coffee. Let's say that we're flying and we see something out in this green area uh, that looks very interesting. Now, I have the teapot here. I'm going to snow plow it. I'm going to look down. I'm going to now go ahead and oops, salute to it. And let's say there was something right there that was super interesting that we saw in the teapot. Might be a target, might be something that we just might want to uh, keep in mind to come back to. We have the teapot looking at it. As long as we are in teapot designate, right? Now we can come over here and we're gonna hit the MK3. And now that just stored that point that I'm looking at on the teapot as mark point three. So now at this point, uh, let's say we're flying, we do our mission, but we want to come back to this area for whatever reason, right? Now what we're going to do here, if you look here, remember, we have our waypoints up right now. How do you find your mark point? Cool. Remember, the waypoint increment button, when you hold it down, brings you to your waypoint menu system. So we're going to hold it down and boom, there it is. Waypoint, market, uh, mark point, and target point. Now, I know we haven't talked much about target point, but we'll save that for when we actually do like uh, uh, weapon system stuff and targets and all of that. But we have mark point. So we're gonna click on mark point and now we're gonna go and click into number three and we're gonna hit enter. Now that we've done that, you'll notice here, symbology changed. Now we have a M mic three. That is now our mark point menu that we can cycle through. And I have uh, three of them currently. I have mark point zero, Mark point one, mark point two, and then mark point three is the one we just created in this demonstration that our teapot was looking at. And with the mark point, much like the uh, waypoint system, if we want to slew over for our, our teapot or our DMT to look at it, we hit the designate button and boom, it shows up on our nav system with the diamond, with the dot in the middle of it to, to show us where the that point is in relation to our aircraft as well as our teapot is looking in that direction now. If we had the DMT, um, when we're generally facing that direction, the DMT would slew over and we can look over in that area to search for targets, to search for whatever it is that caught our eye uh, that made us want to drop that mark point there. And again, hitting the waypoint increment, it allows you to quickly switch through everything. One thing I do want to point out too is while you have the designate button boxed, when you cycle through your, your mark points or waypoints or target points, it's going to slew over your T-Pod in that direction. And the same goes for the DMT. Now, remember, the DMT has a far, far less field of vision compared to the T-Pod. So you would have to kind of be facing the general direction of, of those points to slew over to it. But you get the idea here. As long as it's designated, it's going to keep slewing over. And you'll see here, every time I hit the button, it's moving. It's moving to look in that direction. And that's what's the cool thing about this setup on the Harrier. It really allows you to kind of get on target pretty pretty quickly there. Um, now, once you're done, let's say we, we thought there was something at mark point three, we, we, we dropped the mark point on there, we take further look, we're doing some uh, aerial observations, it turns out it's nothing, and you want to get back to your waypoints, remember, depress the waypoint increment to bring up the waypoint menu system, go to waypoint, box it, and then type in whatever waypoint it is, we'll hit one, and now we're back to our waypoint uh, symbology system here and we can cycle through our waypoints to get back. And so for this example, waypoint zero is home base. So we'll just go ahead and put it on waypoint zero and turn it to direction. And then we would just like RTB and call it a day. And that really is about what I covered in this video. It's really about 96, 97% of what I use regularly at every flight that I'm flying the Harrier. With few exceptions, I really don't dive into more of the nav system than this, what I've shown you. And, and, and so that is really why I wanted to show you this. 
because it really is a fast and easy system to uh, uh, understand and get you going in this aircraft. And over time, you can dive into it much deeper to, you know, understand more things like the date, going into the data and all the waypoints and deleting waypoints, you know, get, getting in depth with it. But for those that want to learn and have a, have the, the core competency in the nav system, I, I gave you everything you needed to know to work through, get familiar with it all and utilize the aircraft uh, properly with that navigation system. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, consider like, subscribing, be on the lookout for more videos in the Harrier Fast and Easy tutorial series. Appreciate you guys watching. Call sign Grammy out.